Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope 2023 is treating you well thus far. My previous video was my last empties of 2022. It was counting it up and seeing if I hit my goal, which was to try and finish 300 items in the year of 2022. And we found out that I did hit that and I actually finished 302 items in total last year. But today's video is kind of the final wrap up on 2022 and it's very much the numbers side of 2022. So it's looking at opening values, opening quantities, closing values and quantities, what I added, used and decluttered and then also looking at how that compares to my average use of the past few years which I have tracked as well. So quite a heavy numbers video today. Really stupidly I have decided to wear uh, this is my NARS Audacious lipstick in the shade Charlotte and I've said it before but the NARS Audacious formula is pretty dangerous on me at the best of times and I feel like a video when I'm talking a lot by the end of the video it might be all over my face, all over my teeth, possibly all over my jumper which I'll be a bit gutted about. Obviously I didn't really think that one through before I put it on today. If I'm covered in lipstick by the end of the video please just excuse that. Anyway I've got my laptop in front of me so let's get on into the numbers. Quantity was my big focus in 2022. Previously I've always done value based usage goals. Values on their own do not tell you the whole story. I could use one product worth $150 or I could use 10 products worth $15 and that's two different quantities, quite dramatically different quantities, but comes to the same usage goal in terms of value. So I think what I want to do going forward is have one year be a value driven goal and the next year be a quantity driven goal. So that way the onus isn't always on me trying to use the most expensive products. I think sometimes when I do go for those values driven goals, I'm looking at the most expensive ones, trying to get the money out of them to get that total and that sometimes means that like my samples for example don't get used because they're only worth a dollar or whatever so I'll sort of push them aside and ignore them and then sometimes that you know I think actually those samples and minis and whatever in terms of overall life trying to have less stuff that clutter that's created by those small things can actually be more stressful you know because they get knocked over they fall down the back of things they're much less easy to keep tidy less easy to maintain because they're small and finicky so I feel like putting a quantity driven goal in place last year really sort of gave me the freedom to spend the time trying to use those things and get rid of them whereas in years when I'm doing more of a values driven goal I'm not as interested in them because I'm not going to get numbers from them one of the other reasons that I went for a quantity goal last year rather than a value driven goal is because I think particularly when I first got into kind of makeup rehab and doing like the reverse rouge challenge and whatever and tracking my empties it almost sort of mentally became a bit like focusing on the values. Now I think the va I needed the shock of the values of my inventory when I like first went on my first beauty no buy in 2018. I needed that number because it gave me this sort of my f first inventories back in 2018 it, I think it was at one point over $30,000 worth of beauty products that I had and having that value really gave me a fright which I needed it made it very much like do you really want to have you know that could have been a deposit on a house or four Chanel handbags <laughs> depending on the price increases and where they're sitting at now there were so many other things that actually Although it had been, you know, one lipstick here, one serum here, one perfume here, looking at that value altogether as a total was a massive wake up call for me. So I'm still really glad that I went down that route first of all. But I think when I started doing the values driven goals and tracking my empties, it almost became like in my mind that I thought I was getting that money back. So I thought it was as if seeing like. <sighs> the numbers add up on my empty spreadsheet and seeing my total and what I was working towards for the year growing and growing it was almost like I was treating it as if I thought that was some like secret bank account that I had that was growing rather than thinking yes in theory by using this thing up I have got the value out of it because I've used it to its end before it's gone bad or whatever it makes it less of a waste of money if I finish something up but nobody's giving you the money back. The money is still spent. I was already kind of aware of it that I was thinking about it like that. So I definitely, I decluttered 
quite well in 2021 because I think becoming a bit focused on the values and seeing the empties going up and seeing how much that value was increasing of what I was getting my money out of. I had noticed that I was thinking about it like that. 2021 I think was my best decluttering year because I think that was the year that I kind of finally made peace with it where I was like yes the number one way that I want things to leave my collection is by using them up but whether something leaves my collection because I use it up or whether something leaves my collection because I either put it in the bin because it's expired or I pass it on to somebody else because I'm not getting the use out of it or I'm not enjoying it or it doesn't suit me or whatever the reason, it leaves my collection and even if I don't get that value on my spreadsheet of empties to total up, it still left my collection. Like, actually at the end of the day I am in the same position where I don't have that product anymore whether it's been an empty or whether it's been a declutter and I think maybe focusing on the values at first blinded me to that a little bit if that makes sense. Now obviously as I said yes the number one way I'd like things to be leaving my collection is by using them up but if I don't declutter things and I'm going to end up binning things because they're going to go bad because I'm not going to be able to move through the whole collection and use things up before they go off. So when you've got a collection the size that I do, decluttering is going to be integral to me ever getting to my long term end goal, which is having a collection where I bring something in and use it up before it's expiry date and let it leave my collection through being finished up rather than ultimately bringing something in and knowing that I'm going to have you for about 15 years because I've got 100 and odd lipsticks or whatever so you're never getting finished unless I put you in a project pan at which point it's then to the detriment of using everything else. So decluttering is the only way that I'm going to get a lot of products out of my collection and decluttering is the only way that I'm ever going to get my collection down to a small enough amount that I could actually be looking at seriously considering that I could use up everything within its its good usage time before it hits its expiry. I feel like we've gone off on a bit of a tangent here but anyway that was really why I decided last year let's take the values out of the equation almost like put every single product on a completely even playing ground. I am quite a goal driven person when I set that goal being like I want to use 300 things when that becomes the goal rather than I want to hit a value using up 10 samples becomes a much more appealing picture or a much more appealing route to go down than using up one product that's going to take me, you know, 100 uses to finish. I'm really, really glad that I went down the quantity route last year, but anyway, before I go off on any more of a tangent, let's talk numbers. For my quantities, last year I opened my makeup inventory with 671 items, my skincare inventory with 248 items, my hair care inventory with 95 items, and my perfume inventory with 54 items. So that gave me a total opening quantity of 1,068 items at the start of 2022. In total last year, I used up 302 items. That broke down across 36 items of makeup, 182 items of skincare, 51 items of hair care, and 33 items from my perfume inventory. I added a total of 155 items in last year. That came from 32 makeup items, 86 skincare items, 19 hair care items, and 18 perfume items. And last year was not a great year for decluttering. I decluttered 78 things in total, and they were all makeup. Makeup wise, I opened with 671 items, added 32, used 36, so I am pleased that I used more than I added, and I decluttered 78. Opened 671 and closed off with 589. So I'm really pleased that I took that under the 600. However, if I look at my average makeup use, last year, although I used 36 products, six of them were sashi samples, which when I look at my spreadsheet where I track my average use of each category of item, so like how many eye primers, how many face primers, etc., I don't bother with sashes on that because I just I, I don't think it's that important and I think that kind of skews the numbers a little bit. Not counting sashes, I actually used 30 items last year and it's quite interesting because my focus last year was so much on using stuff up and I really do feel this year I need to not be focused on that because I need to rotate through things. I am absolutely sure that I have stuff in my collection that has gone off that I have just not touched in so long that I don't realise that it's gone off. I say, I, like, I know that that's the case. I'm already identifying certain things that that's the case with. 
For how much I felt that I did not touch the rest of my makeup collection last year, I used 30 items and in 2021 I used 26 items. In 2020 I used 22 and in 2019 I used 30. Now I did do a 2018 no buy year, attract my empties etc but I did that on my old computer so I don't have it. I'm now using Google um, Sheets so that even as I get new computers and whatever those documents come forward but I don't have the 2018 documents so I feel like as well 2018 was my first sort of beauty rehab year. I finished a lot of stuff in 2018 that was all the stuff that had been sort of sitting around half used. It was quite easy to sort of get quite a lot out in 2018 because you know it was the first year that I was really trying to get stuff out so I feel like my numbers would be quite high in 2018 which probably skews average use anyway so it's probably just as well that those figures aren't here. But anyway so that gives me an average use per year over the last four years of 27 items a year. So using 30 items, as in 30 items not including sashes, last year, it is a 10% increase on the average. If we look at the average as being 27, I use three more items than average and you know 10% of 27 would be 2.7. So I used actually technically more than 10% more than usual. But for that number to be essentially 30, not including sashi samples, and my opening to be 671. If we take the six sashi samples off the opening total to say that my opening was 665 and I used 30 items, that really shows why I need to be decluttering. Because if my average use over the last four years has been 27 items a year and I have a makeup collection that is nearer 700 items than it is 600 items, that is probably, I, I don't have the figure to hand, but that's probably less than 3% of my collection being used up each year, which is not what I want to be. So I definitely want this year to be rotating through, finding things to declutter and just bringing that down and being okay with bringing that down through decluttering and not necessarily like getting the money out of my products because I'm never going to get the money and even when I do get the money, by which I mean when I use the product up and get the value out of the money that I have spent on it, the money's never coming back to me. The money is spent, the money is gone. So although I am going to be doing a value-based goal next year, that's the thing I really need to keep in my head is like, this is about using up a percentage of your collection each year to move towards having a healthier collection, towards having a more realistic collection, towards having a collection that does not stress you out and bog you down with taking up so much space in your life when it's things that are going to go off. So that's where makeup is. For skincare I opened with 248 items, I added 86, I used up 182 and I didn't declutter any. So skincare I am ending with 160. That's the best part of 100 items of skincare gone this year. Really really pleased with that. Skincare I think I have a couple of categories within skincare which are still you know requiring work so off the top of my head I've got a lot of cleansers and I think what I'm going to need to do is just start using some of them as body cleansers and um, when I say cleansers I, I mean like face cleansers so I'm never going to get them all used up before they go off so I feel like this year I need to stop buying shower gel and just start using my face washes as body washes to start moving through them because I've got a lot of them and I've got a lot of face masks. Those are the two kind of categories that come to mind straight away as being large within my skincare inventory. Overall, I really do think my skincare inventory is maybe not by the end of this year, but by the end of next year, I think it'll be pretty much under control. I'm using up a lot of skincare. You can see I've brought in quite a lot of skincare. Now that comes from two things. First of all, I get a lot of skincare samples and I get my Liberty Beauty box, which usually has quite a lot of skincare products in. The thing with like beauty boxes and things like the advent calendar and whatever, gifts with purchase, they're trying to suit everybody. So I think that's probably an indication of why face masks and cleansers are particularly high categories within my skincare inventory because they're a bit more generic, they're a bit more general, you can get samples and things. So, so some of that 86 is samples, but I've also got a couple of categories in my skincare inventory now, makeup removers and serums being the main ones that come to mind where I am actually, I'm using things up and having to actually purchase repurchases. 
or replacements rather. Skincare, perfectly happy with where it's at and I think probably not one more year but maybe within another two years skincare will not be a worry to me at all I don't think. Hair care, I am so pleased with how hair care went this year. Opened with a total of 95 items in my hair care inventory. I added 19, most of them again would be samples. Again hair care is quite a generic easy thing to give out and to gift and to samples so I don't really recall. I had to buy my dry bar heat protectant but I think that's the only like replacement that I would have really bought under hair care but I used 51 this year so I was really really pleased with that. Sorry I didn't talk about my average skincare use so let's just quickly do that. So in 2019 I used 164 items of skincare, in 2020 140, 2021 112 and 2022 182 so my average use of skincare items is 149 and a half items per year say 150 for simplicity's sake is my average i used about 20 percent more when i was putting the onus on really trying to use stuff up so i did use a bit more than usual for skincare but skincare is always from the start has always been the thing that i've been closest to using the most up of every year that I have reduced the most every year. That's why skincare just doesn't really worry me because if I'm using an average of 150 items a year skincare wise and I am closing 2022 with what did we say 160 items then obviously it's not quite as straightforward as saying in theory if I was to use my average which is 150 again this year I would only have 10 items of skincare left at the end of the year because certain things would have been replaced. So like if I serums as I said if I finish my hydrating serum I buy another one so that that number stays constant it doesn't really go down I do I think skincare probably not within one year but within two I don't think I'll be worried about skincare at all anymore back to hair care for hair care I started with 95 added 19 items used up 51 didn't declutter any and ended the year with 54 items of hair care now I used far above average for hair care this year. So in 2019, I used 23 items of hair care. In 2020, it was 22. 2021, it was 29. And in 2022, it was 52. My average use for hair care items is 31 and a half per year. Now I do count sample sashes in my hair care, just because you do tend to get sample sashes of hair care. I do have a good number of sashes. Seven out of those 52 items are sashes, but that still means I used up 45 normal standard items. So I'm really, really pleased. So my average use for hair care is 31 and a half items, closing 2022 off with 54 items. So again, I don't want to be too excited and say within one year that I think hair care will be under control because I've still got, again, certain categories that are really big that are probably going to take the best part of two years to get to a point where they are under control but I do think we're on that final stretch with hair care. Really really pleased with that. And then for perfumes I opened with 54. I added 18. Again I got a lot of perfume samples. I think I only actually added two bottles of perfume this year. Got the Shalimar Flanker for Christmas and I bought a bottle of perfume when I was on holiday. I am allowed to buy things on holiday under the rules of my no buy. So it's only actually two bottles as in full size bottles of perfume. So the 16 other adds have just been samples. I'm really sorry by the way, I said my last video I had a cold and I've still not completely shaken it so if I sound really nasally and choked up, I'm really sorry. But yeah, so I used up 33 perfumes, which meant I finished off the year with 39 perfumes in my perfume inventory. So I am really happy, but obviously the majority of those would be samples and I've just counted samples in with the perfumes. It's not something that worries me, I find perfume, if I really decide to commit to a perfume and finish it up. It is something I think I can go through fairly easily. I'm not worried about perfume. I really like perfume so I got quite a lot as gifts in 2020 and 2021 but I did think last year it was starting to spiral a little bit more out of control than I would like it to be which is why I've only brought in two this year so that's a considerably less number bringing in than I have done in previous years. In fact, if I go to, so I, what I used to have was perfume was in my skincare inventory and I split it out in 20, 2021? Yes. 
So 2021 is the first year that I had a perfume inventory. So in 2021, I added 17 and the majority of them I would say were full size perfumes. Whereas in 2022, I added 18, but the majority of them were definitely samples. So although the numbers don't actually seem that different, actually this is where the values can. This is why you need both. You need the value and the quantity because last year, although I added in 17 perfumes, they were worth $1,678.42. This year I added in 18, but they were only worth $311.40, which makes sense if you think about two of them being full sizes and the rest all being like one dollar samples. That paints a very different picture than when you look at the values for perfume in terms of what I brought in versus the quantities for what I brought in. But yeah, so I think I really slowed down on bringing in perfume last year and I want to continue that next year. I definitely don't want to be bringing in more than I can use up in a year but I do want to rotate this year rather than trying to finish loads of perfume because I really like perfume and it doesn't go off really quickly. I keep them in their boxes, they're out of direct sunlight. So I feel like as long as I don't keep adding to my perfume inventory, I'm okay with where it's actually sitting at. So for overall totals, I opened 2022 with 1,068 products, added in 155, used 302 and decluttered 78. Finished off the year with a total of 842 products. So I think that's about a 20% reduction more or less so really really pleased with the way my quantities went last year. Although I wasn't concentrating on values last year I did still track them so to look at the values in 2022 I opened my makeup inventory with a value of $15,365.06. I added in $886.91 worth of makeup and I used up $466.82 worth of makeup so this is where, although my quantity that I added in was less than what I used up and took out, I obviously brought in a lot more expensive items than I used. So that's, again, that's why you need to track both. But I decluttered $1,290.89 worth of makeup last year. So my new total, I am very pleased to report, is $14,494.26. I have taken my makeup inventory to being under $15,000. Do realise that is absolutely still an insane amount for my makeup collection to be worth, and I did purchase the majority of my makeup collection. Yes, some things I've got as gifts, some things are samples, some things have been gifts with purchase or whatever. I am not like a vlogger with a massive following, I'm not getting sent PR. That has been my own money that I have spent on that, and it's it wasn't all brought in at once, it was brought in over time, but it's still an insane amount for that to be worth. So obviously in the long run, I really want to see that come down dramatically, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm going to take the win of being, we started at being over 15,000 and ended under 15,000. I'm going to take that. Skincare, I opened with a value of $5,263.62. I added in $1,812.89 worth of skincare and I used up $3,091.77 worth of skincare, didn't declutter any, and closed off with my new inventory being worth $3,984.73. Really pleased that number started with a five, and we got just under the four. We've got a 3984, so it's under $4,000. So I'm really, really pleased with that as a reduction. Hair care, I started worth $1,728.69. I added in $162.70, used up $659.14, and ended hair care worth $1,232. And 25 cents. Very pleased with that as a reduction like that. Almost a third that I've brought that down by, is that right? Maths is not my strong point, but yeah, I'm gonna say that that's roughly a third. If we say it started at 18 and ended at 12, it's just under a third, but more than a quarter, but under a third is what I've reduced that by. So really, really happy with that. Then perfumes, I opened at $4,913.92 closed off at 466967. So although I used a lot, as I said, a lot of it was samples. So it's not been a massive reduction in value, but still a bit of a reduction. So I'm okay with that. As I said, perfume, I'm not too worried about. If it stays around about where it is, that's manageable. I just don't want it to grow past where it is. So my total values, 2022, I opened with $27,271.29 
I added $3,167.90 worth of stuff. I used up $4,044.63 worth of stuff and I decluttered $1,290.89 worth of stuff. And my closing balance is worth $24,380.91 worth of stuff. I'm really, really pleased actually that that has been an opening number of 27 and something thousand and it's closing off just under 25,000. So that feels like a really significant reduction overall. Now, I will obviously be doing a separate video on what my goals are for 2023 in terms of my beauty rehab behaviours. So how much I want to reduce by, as I said, it'll be a value driven goal again for 2023 but I haven't yet set that. I think I'd like the goal to be a sort of percentage of what my opening totals are. So I do just want to say here, those closing totals will not be the same as my 2023 opening totals. So the reasons for that, A, I had my advent calendar this year and I also got, when we did the order for my advent calendar, I got the Space NK Beauty gift with purchase, which my grand put away and I got on Christmas. That's quite a significant amount of stuff and I also got a couple of things beauty wise for Christmas. And I don't, because I go away between Christmas and New Year, I don't spend the time on Christmas Day adding that to my inventory. So where we've closed off, there's still stuff that needs added in that has been brought in around Christmas time. So they will all have to be factored in for my 2023 opening figures. But the other thing that probably will skew it is that this year I will do videos doing my inventory counts with you. So you'll see all the products and you'll see me counting them. You'll see the numbers as we go along. And that's something I usually do at the start of every year is do a new inventory count. Just because ultimately I am human. So there will be things that come in that I miss through the year that if they're then still sitting there to go into the next year it, it's a way of catching it all and just making sure you know there isn't a whole load of stuff coming in every year that I'm not noticing that three years down the line I've still not added in but I did notice quite a few things this year that as I was finishing them and trying to put them into my empties they hadn't been there in the first place I had to add them in to take them out and the reason for that if you guys followed me last year you might remember that I was in the middle of decorating and um, we had loads and loads of setbacks so I ended up over Christmas and New Year last year, half of my stuff was still in the loft and whatever, and we didn't really have an end date in sight for some of the work that's still, still not done. This wall is going to get wallpapered, but that radiator is to be replaced first of all. I'm letting the landlords deal with that. I'm not paying to get that done, but I'm also not paying to get, because it's a patterned wallpaper that I've got, it's quite expensive to get it put up. I'm not paying to get the wallpaper put up until the radiator has been replaced, as, you know, they want to do to their house, so but they are now dragging their heels after saying they want to do that. It's very frustrating. The radiator is the hold up, but I'm I'm not, it'll be sods a lot. The minute I just pay somebody to wallpaper for that wall, they'll want to do the radiator like the next month. So it's still not finished, but that that's the main outstanding thing. But yeah, last year was, and I, I was just basically living in a building site last year. So the majority of my stuff, not just my beauty stuff, but my stuff in general last year, was in the loft so I I couldn't do I couldn't facilitate a new inventory count last year but I felt it really showed as I was using things up this year I kept coming across stuff so I feel like I'm going to need to do a good inventory count this year um, but I think there probably will be quite a few things that I've not caught in the last two years because I didn't do that count last year this year I just basically used my 2021 closing became my 2022 opening rather than a recount. I think there, there will be possibly quite a significant difference between my 2022 closing and whatever my 2023 opening figures will be, which not massively looking forward to, but you need to know the truth to be able to face it. So I'll do those videos with you and once I've got those inventories counted, I'll sit down, I'll decide what my goals are for this year. Um, I am going to do a project pan, but I've not quite finalised some of the items. Speaking of how I need to declutter because things are going off, I had plans to put a lip gloss into my project pan and I've now gone through and like all of the main contenders are pretty much, they're off. They smell bad, they don't feel good on the mouth. So I'm moving through my lip glosses right now, trying to assess if any of them, you know, could be suitable to go in or if the ones that aren't off are something that I want to pan this year and whatever. So there will be a project pan. There will be a usage based goal and there's definitely going to be, I'm going to put something kind of formal in place to force me to rotate. I don't know if it's going to be makeup baskets or I'm kind of, I'm debating a few different ideas with myself at the moment and um, maybe like a project pan that's a usage based one separate to my main project pan where items would only be in until I'd use them 10 times or something. 
I don't know, I haven't quite made my mind up, but there will be a 2023 makeup rehab goals and plans video, so do make sure you are subscribed for that. Thank you very much for watching this one. I know it's been long, I know it's been wordy, I know it's been numbers heavy, not very visually interesting. Um, I think my lipstick is actually not all over my teeth by the end, so that's, that's a positive. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.